Meet one of this reporter's best friends, a newsreel camera. Cost, about $3,000, worth every penny of it. With it, reports come alive, gain meaning, bring the world to your doorstep. We have had this one out visiting photo dealers of all kinds. We poked it into stores all across the country from Boston to San Francisco and a lot of places in between. We talked to dealers and the dealers talked to us. We even hid the camera so we could see life as it really is. Yes, and we managed to get the camera into places where it wasn't supposed to be. Why? What is all this about? Very simple. We have been getting together a report on Polaroid Corporation and its products during the exciting year just passed and for the year that 1965 will be. Your reporter, Lowell Thomas. And it's a real pleasure to make this report to you. Like millions of others, I've watched Polaroid from afar. Unlike them, I've had a chance to dig in and find out about it, and it's quite a story. Here to help me today, a man many of you have seen in your stores. Take a bow. He and I will share the platform. Our intent, to show where Polaroid has been, where Polaroid is going, and where you fit in. The big story is the growth story. 15 or 16 years in the marketplace have done nothing to dull the spontaneous kick people get out of seeing a finished picture on the spot. I saw it wherever I went. You see it every time you take demonstration pictures in your store. Begin to use a Polaroid land camera and a crowd gathers. What's more, the people pay strict attention. And this appeal has been turned into a real growth curve for Polaroid. From 1948, when Polaroid entered the business, a steady rise until now the curve shows about $140 million a year. How does the size of Polaroid stack up against the rest of the photographic industry? I think you'll get a surprise out of this. This bar represents the yearly dollar volume of all 35 millimeter cameras sold in this country. This one shows the yearly dollar volume of all eight millimeter movie cameras sold in this country. Now, have a look at the yearly dollar volume of Polaroid land cameras, just the camera, not including film and accessories. Tells its own story, doesn't it? For the average dealer, Polaroid cameras are a big piece of his hardware business. Let's look at it another way. Total sales of imported cameras contrasted with Polaroid camera volume. Begin with the import of German still cameras. Add to that the import of Japanese still cameras, plus all the miscellaneous imports. Include every still camera from toy cameras out of Hong Kong to the most expensive Leica. Figure the dollar volume at the dealer level, including import duties and distributor markup. This is what you get. The Polaroid camera figure, here it is, also at the dealer level. Unbelievable? Well, there it is in black and white. This position in the marketplace is no accident. I found that out. It has been carefully built and owes its growth to a good many factors. The product line, of course. Constantly improving, constantly expanding, Film speeds have gone from 100 ASA to 200, to 400, to 3,000, even to 10,000, to say nothing about a lot of films for special uses. Transparency films, both continuous tone and line. Four by five film, a complete line. And more recently, infrared film. It has taken a long line of cameras to support these films, some 25 models over the years. The first Polaroid land camera, the old 95, graduating to a group of coupled rangefinder cameras. This 800 is one of them. 
Then came the electric eye models. And more recently, the color pack cameras. Quite a product story. One of the major reasons for Polaroid's fabulous growth. But only one of the reasons. I found there were others. National advertising, for example. There have been many memorable Polaroid ads. I'm sure most of you remember campaigns like this one. This one, too. And this one. Small wonder they have carried off some of the most coveted awards advertising can win. Of course, the awards for 1964 haven't been made yet, but let me nominate a couple that can't miss. They are two commercials in color. In my opinion, some of the most sensitive and powerful advertising I've seen. Let's replay them right now. You're not taking color pictures with the new Polaroid color pack camera. There's something left out of your life. If you're not taking color pictures with a new Polaroid color pack camera, there's something left out of your life. Aren't those something? Creative product lines, brilliant advertising, those mean a lot, but it takes even more to account in full for Polaroid's growth. And the folks at Polaroid weren't a bit shy in naming that most important ingredient. In fact, they asked me to tell you how well they know and appreciate how important dealer support, your support is in all its aspects. Whether it be your skill and knowledge behind the counter, your newspaper ads, your window displays. Yes, Polaroid does know and appreciate what dealers are doing to make such a success of instant photography. Because they do, they're going to try an unheard of experiment. They're going to share with you in great detail their plans for the coming year. Plans you'll learn about in a little while for the new model 103 and 104 color pack cameras due to go on the market early next month. The long-awaited Model 20, the black and white camera that will sell for about $20. Yes, you'll find out just where that one fits in. Finally, the forthcoming Model 180, a pack camera using an F4.5 lens. That one will replace the old 110B. It's being put on the schedule right now. As these plans are spelled out, I'm convinced you'll feel just the way I do. The Polaroid growth story in the past is just a taste of what is to come. Successful as Polaroid has been, 
It has only scratched the surface. Let's see just why I say this. Here's a pie chart that shows the total number of still cameras sold each year in the United States, about six million in 1965. It has been cut into two major segments. This piece represents variable focus cameras, the more expensive ones. Average dealer price, $50. It represents only about 30% of the total. With cameras at a dealer price near $100, twice the average, Polaroid has done very well. About 35% of the units and 60% of the dollars. What will happen when the two new pack cameras hit the market? Look for Polaroid to gain an even larger share of this upper end of the still camera market. And with the coming of the $20 camera in July, Polaroid will move for the first time into that segment that represents the fixed focus camera. Let's not forget, 70% of camera buyers fall into this group. Any guess as to how large a share of this market Polaroid will take is just that, a guess. But don't be too surprised if in time it amounts to one third, perhaps even one half of the units. In any event, there doesn't seem to be much question that Polaroid product sales are going to continue to grow and grow a lot. One thing I'm sure of, Polaroid hopes you'll join them in the massive growth that lies ahead. But they know you will join only if it means profitable business for you. Their marketing people do not assume that every dealer is making a big profit on the Polaroid line. As we poked around with our newsreel camera late last year, we found too many places where profits must have been low. On the other hand, there were many dealers who were selling at respectable margins, even amazing margins, in this day of heavy discounting. One mighty interesting thing showed up in the analysis Polaroid made of last year's business. In many areas, there has been a change of attitude at the retail level. More and more dealers find that they can set prices at a profitable level and hold, even increase, their share of the local market. How? The answer seems to lie in shifting the focus from price selling to promotional selling. And the facts seem to bear out this finding. For example, during 1964, the average increase in Polaroid sales across the nation was about 13%. But when some 50 dealers who ran three or more promotions in 1964 were stacked against this average, well, here's the increase. 32%, more than twice the average gain. Did they do it at a profit? Polaroid thinks they did. These dealers repeated and repeated and repeated. They spent their own money for ads, direct mailings, demonstration pictures, special locally done signs. In addition, close study of these outstanding dealers showed they had used about every promotion Polaroid came up with. They went in big for trade-in promotions and the six-point camera check. They made use of professional football stars, scheduled the Polaroid camera girls and backed them up with ads and cashed in on the trip to Rome promotion. They ran plenty of ads and kept the Polaroid name out front in their windows and counters. When it came to price selling, they concentrated on the Model 101. But at the counter, the prospect was traded up to the Model 100 and sold a bag full of accessories. What was the overall result? This group of promotion-minded dealers found they had sold the 100 at a ratio of four or five to one. Compare that with the national average of two for one, and it makes quite a picture. Did they feel it paid off? Will they spend their own money in 1965 to keep it up? Only one way to answer those questions. Send some staffers into the field and find out. And that's just what we did. First, let's talk to a man who sold about $18 in accessories for every camera he sold in 1964. Meet Ed Similian of Mass Motion Picture Service. Ed, where do you operate? Lowell, 
Uh, we have leased apartments in 17 stores throughout New England and Upper State New York. And did you have a good year? I'd say so. Our units were up over 30%. How many promotions did it take to get that kind of gain? We ran 34 promotions during the year, averaging about three per store. And how did you do so well on the accessories? Well, for one thing, we had the Polaroid accessory tray in every store. Our people were taught to take it and demonstrate before the final tally was added up. Accessories are surprisingly easy to sell if you show them. Anything else boost your accessory sales? Yes, we made up some special kits. Here's our number one executive kit. As you can see, it's all packed in an attache case. It holds the camera and flash, portrait kit, self-timer, developing timer, black and white film, color film, cable release, and two dozen flash bulbs. What did that go for? We sold this for 188.88. And we sold a lot of them, too. And when we couldn't, we dropped to our executive kit number two. It contains less, but brought us 159.88. One final question. Did you sell many 101s? No more than we had to. We found it easy to trade up. We sold more than 10 model 100s for every 101. What about size and location? Do you have to run a big city store to make promotions pay off? This is Laconia, New Hampshire. Population 16,000 people when the skiers aren't in town. People here see Polaroid camera commercials and they read life and look just like the folks in the city. They also respond to promotions as Jim Wilson of Aldrich Photo found out in 1964. In this small store, with his first six-point check, Jim Wilson moved out 10 cameras. What did you think about that? I was amazed. Before it happened, I wouldn't have bet anyone that I could sell 10 cameras at $159 in a single day. But I did, which just proves you never know. So what did you do after you sold that many in one day? Why, I booked another one just as fast as I could. The promotion, plus the fact that it was just before Christmas, moved out another 15 cameras. I never saw anything like it. Those 25 cameras were one-third of my total Polaroid volume. And how did 1964 stack up against the previous year? Oh, I did twice as many cameras. Any complaints? Yes, sir. I started promoting too late. This year, I know better. I'll be off and running this spring. Well, how about it? Will this be your story in 1965? What do you do when the competition all around you has driven prices down to rock bottom level? Some dealers like Charlie Welch down in Fort Worth at the camera shop have an answer. Ignore them and promote heavily at a price level that makes it all worthwhile. Charlie, how many Polaroid promotions did you run this past year? About eight or nine. Uh, we began last June with three ads in the local newspapers on the new Model 101 camera, and then uh, we ran one a month through the fall and stepped it up to uh, two, mo two monthly in November and December. What kind of promotions? Well, just about everything that Dick Johnson, the uh, Polaroid rep, suggested. Uh, we had a couple of six-point promotions. Uh, several trade-ins, and we even ran ads to sell the used camera we took in on trade. These cameras up here. And were your prices high enough? They're never uh, quite high enough, of course, but uh, we're uh, getting 139.95 for the Model 100, and that's about $20 higher than the local market, uh, more than most camera stores around here. But could you sell at those prices? We sure could. In 1963, we sold 122 Polaroid cameras, and due to promotions, we increased our sales to 159 cameras this past year, about a 30% increase. And what was the mix of 100s to 101s? About nine 100 cameras were sold for every model uh, 101. 
Going to promote in 1965? You bet. Sometimes in this business, almost unbelievable things happen. Out in North Hollywood, California, Jack Williams of Hooper Camera Exchange got so excited about the success of his promotions, he paid a tribute to Polaroid in a very special way. Just what was it? Well, after Jim Moran set up several promotions and helped me sell a lot of cameras, I agreed to give him an endorsement. You mean you wrote a letter for him? Better than that. He was running a training session for Woodall's camera over in Glendale. I showed up, stood before the group, and told him how well we had done and how we did it. That was a crazy thing to do, wasn't it? Go help a competitor. I know it, but then I owed Polaroid a big favor. You see, my camera sales jumped over 33% last year. And best of all, the dollars were higher. All but 4% of the cameras went out as kits. If I roll like this in 1965, I've told Jim I'll address another meeting for him. For a competitor's store? Oh, no. Not again. I don't mind sharing my secrets. But the next time, I want to do it 40 miles down the freeway. Now that we have heard from a cross-section of U.S. dealers, let's visit one of our Canadian neighbors over in Windsor, Ontario. This is Frank Wandsborough's camera shop. What kind of a year did you have, Frank? Tremendous. We moved 30 Polaroid cameras as compared to 10 in 1963, and that's a 200% increase. Only 30 cameras? I know it doesn't sound like much compared to the states, but don't forget our costs are higher, and our average sale is about $175. And we're right across the river from Detroit. Did you promote? Yes, we did. Here are a couple of successful ads. We sold six cameras on a six-point check and moved quite a bit of film and accessories at an owner clinic. How do you feel about 1965? Real good. I plan to promote early and expect to double my volume in cameras and film. Well, you've heard it for yourself. That about winds up this report. For myself, the deeper we dug, the more exciting the prospects became. On the basis of what I've seen, it sure seems as if the success found by many dealers in 1964 will be overshadowed by what can happen in 1965. Now you'll want the details I promised you a few minutes ago. So I'll turn the meeting back to your host. The best of luck to you in the coming year. It's all yours. introduces an economy model of the famous color pack camera for half the price of the original. Same great film. Same fast loading. Same electric eye. Yet it's half the price of the original model. You get the same beautiful color prints in 60 seconds, black and white in 10, in the same big size. Yet it's half the price of the original model. Isn't it your turn to own a Polaroid color pack camera? If you were wishing for it way back last Father's Day, and you had to go through the whole summer without it, you kept your fingers crossed on your birthday, but no luck. And she didn't even come through on your anniversary. And then you kind of looked for it at Christmas, but uh-uh. Mister? Maybe your time has come at last. Polaroid announces an economy model of the famous color pack camera for half the price of the original. Same great film. Same fast loading. Same electric eye. You get the same beautiful color prints in 60 seconds. Black and white in 10 seconds in the same big size. 
Yet Polaroid has figured out a way to bring it out for only half the price of the original model. Who knows? Maybe she's wrapping it up right now. <laughs>